program comes from executive producer Lillian Garcia. Every athlete is on this quest. Every performer dives in head first, battling real life challenges and overcoming obstacles in an effort to make their dreams reality. reality. Singer, speaker, and 15 year WWE host Lillian Garcia was the first woman to ever announce WrestleMania and is now the PFL MMA cage announcer. Oh, yeah. And now she's giving you an all access pass to the human interest stories of elite athletes, extraordinary entertainers, and wellness experts. Now let's embark on another fascinating journey of chasing glory with your host, Lillian Garcia. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Post WrestleMania. That's right, it's Post WrestleMania. It is Chasing Glory, but guess what? Haven't seen the show yet. Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, so let me talk about this. The fact is, I'd like to get the show to you guys first thing Monday morning. In order to do that, I have to get everything to the editors by Saturday. So, the only thing that's happened so far is my performance on The Bump. What? Yeah, let's talk about this. Okay, back up. All right, so haven't seen WrestleMania yet because it is actually Saturday afternoon right now. But if you guys followed my stories and also the WWE, you found out that they invited me to be on the show, The Bump. They wanted me to kick off WrestleMania with America the Beautiful. Whoa, what a true honor. Uh, the fact that I got to do it now, I never in a million years thought that I was going to be doing it from the living room, but it is what it is, right? That's where we all are. We're at home. We're making the best out of it. And so when they contacted me to do it, I didn't hesitate. I'm like, man, absolutely. It means so much to me uh, as an army brat for one thing, and just the fans, you guys, always asking me to sing. And I've been using this time to sing more and share more of my voice on Instagram as a comforting way, hopefully. And you're coming back telling me how much it is comforting you. So that really does mean the world. So of course, when WWE calls you and asks you if you will be part of WrestleMania and part of singing the America the Beautiful, I'm like, hell yes. So I just got done a few hours ago. Um, I still have my adrenaline is rushing. Um, I thank you so much to the hosts from The Bump, Matt and Ryan and Evan. You guys were so, so sweet, so nice. And I, I love the way that Ryan said he's got chills upon chills. <laughs> that was so cool. All right. So if you missed it, how about we give you a little tease right now? I hear that a lot of you wanted to see it. So here we go. Here is America the Beautiful from my living room, and hopefully you will get some comfort out of this. Roll the tape.
it wasn't easy because it was early morning here in California and the voice doesn't like to function early morning. But man, I'm telling you, even though you guys were not around me like normal in, you know, around the, the ring and just being in the stadium, I could feel you. I could feel your energy. I could feel your love. And so I thank you because seriously, without you, it is nothing. And I just want to thank the WWE for this opportunity. And I also want to thank the WWE for putting on WrestleMania regardless. I know that many people have been like, wait, why didn't they postpone? But the truth of the matter is, we don't know how long this virus is going to take to go away. We don't know how long before we go back to our normal lives. So the show must go on in some cases. So I really want to thank the WWE for trying to entertain us during this most difficult, difficult time. And I also want to thank everybody from The Bump for mentioning Chasing Glory. How awesome was that? When Matt asked me about Chasing Glory and about why I even started it, uh, man, I wasn't expecting that, but it just tells me that this show is meaning something to you as much as I was hoping it would mean to you and that the superstars and their stories are really touching you. And that is so awesome. So definitely thank you to them. Thank you, WWE again. Also, how much you are part of the show. So give yourselves a big round of applause. I wish I had you guys here in the studio. I feed off your energy as well. But what helps me is all the comments that you give. You constantly give comments on at Chasing Glory on Instagram, also on my feed at Lillian Garcia on Instagram and Twitter and Lillian Garcia official fan page on Facebook and of course YouTube. Our YouTube subscriptions are going up, up, up. Thank you for that. I really want to thank you, youtube.com slash Lillian Garcia, and also for subscribing to the show wherever you get your podcast, whether you're listening, whether you're watching, Chasing Glory is here for you, and Chasing Glory is working hard during this pandemic to constantly give you new content and fresh content. And just want to thank you for the five-star rating that has been there since the beginning of this podcast in 2017. Couldn't thank you more for that. And your reviews. Okay, so your reviews. During this time that you're quarantined at home and you might have a little more time on your hands and you're bored, go on Apple Podcast, fill out a review of what you like about the show. Tell us who you would like to see on here as well. That helps the show. So please do that during this time so that Chase and Glory can give a little, get a little more love and help in the ratings because that is important to continue this for you. And we're trying hard. We're trying so hard to make sure that the show continues for you week after week during this time, especially. All right. So WrestleMania, like I said, I can't talk about it because I haven't seen it, but yes, it's different. I'm sure <laughs> that's for sure. I want to thank the performers. I want to thank the athletes. I want to thank the crew for putting themselves on the line to travel and give us this entertainment as well. I mean, come on guys. They really are trying to do whatever they can to bring this. So uh, I just want to thank everybody for that. Doesn't matter what the show turned out to be or not turned out to be. They're sacrificing their lives. So talking about quarantine time, how's it going for you? I know. I know. This isn't easy, guys. This isn't easy. And I've been on a roller coaster, let me tell you. The roller coaster, I get the highs of, I'm grateful for this and I'm grateful for that. And then, oh my God, it just sinks in. All this death, all this illness. So many people that are suffering, so many people that are losing their jobs. And I get it. I'm right there with you. I want things to go back to being able to see my friends, to hug my mom. I miss hugging my mom. I want things to go back to normal. Please, can we just have things go back to normal? But let's talk about the normal. Because in the normal, 
We also talked about how our lives were go, 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 go. And we didn't have time for this. And we didn't have time for that. And we didn't reach out to our friends and we didn't have time for our families. And so every time we were also comparing ourselves and we were going through the feed and we were like, oh my God, I can't keep up with her. I can't keep up with him. I got to do more. I got to do more and dancing and this and singing. And oh my God, just the rat race going on and on and on. This is a forced pause. This is a global reset. Guess what? As bad as this is, as scary as this is, this is also a freaking blessing. Are you guys getting more rest? I hope so. Are you guys really communicating with your families and having good family time? I hope so. Are you reaching out to your friends and your family that you haven't seen for a very, very long time that are scattered all over the world? I hope so. I hope that you're using this time to really dive in and say, you know, there were some things in the normal that weren't feeling so good. So if that's the case, this is it. This is the time you get to really go inside and take a look at your lives. There is no FOMO. There's no, gosh, I wish I was in Italy right now. Oh, I wish I was in Spain right now. There's none of that because there is no safe place on this earth right now that you can get away with what's happening. The safest place right now is home. The safest place is to quarantine. And the safest place is to sit there and do things that are uncomfortable and find things within you that are so like moving and they're going, whoa, I've never done this before, but this is feeling pretty good. Meditating, what's that? Okay, everyone's talking about it. Let's try it. You find out that meditating is pretty cool. You find out that reaching out to a friend that you haven't talked to in a really long time is pretty darn cool. And you find out that social distancing is one thing, but socializing, especially on the internet and IG Live and Facebook can be so beautiful. It has been such a beautiful gift for me to really connect with all of you. My IG lives daily that I've been doing, I probably wouldn't have done them had it not been for this pandemic. So I am grateful for that. The conversations, the deep conversations that I have had with my husband, probably wouldn't have done them because I was too busy. Just the walks that I've had with my dog, appreciating the outdoor air, probably wouldn't have happened if it was just another normal day. So really dive in deep during this time. Things are gonna get back to the hustle and bustle. So you're gonna wish when you go there that you were right here in this quarantine time that can be such a gift. All right, guys. So today I'm excited to bring you as you might know him, Damien Sandow, or Ms. Dow, but his real name, Aaron Stevens. So we actually did this recording of this episode right before the pandemic. And then I said, you know what? I wanna hold on to this episode for a reason till April, because it was during the episode when he talked about how special WrestleMania was for him. How special all of you fans made WrestleMania for him and how he didn't have to win that battle royal to feel like a champion. You made him feel like a champion. So I was thinking, wow, this would be pretty cool to air this the day before WrestleMania because you guys gave him the WrestleMania moment. You guys have that much power out there and he will never forget that from you. So he really opens up in this interview. 
He talks about being let go from the WWE and the gift that he actually got from that. You would never think that. Now, what I'm about to let you in on is a little secret, but I can't tell you the whole secret. After this episode, after we recorded it, hmm, as fate has it, he and I worked on something together. Pretty cool. Don't know when it's going to come out because now with this pandemic, we don't know the schedule of things, but it's pretty neat how life just brings you these gifts are of coming together and Aaron and I did. So it's going to be pretty exciting when this does come out and I will tell you then. But until now, how about let's do it. Here is Aaron Stevens, or as you know him, Damien Sandow's Journey of Chasing Glory. Born in Massachusetts, Aaron Stevens began his wrestling career training under WWE Hall of Famer Killer Kowalski. He wrestled all over the New England area before catching the eye of the WWE, where he signed an exclusive contract. After wrestling a few years in their developmental territory, Ohio Valley Wrestling, he made his debut on SmackDown alongside KC James with the managerial guidance of Michelle McCool. After multiple tag team championship matches, he would be sent back to OVW, and eventually Aaron and the WWE would part ways in 2007, which allowed him to wrestle independently around the country, as well as Puerto Rico. Nearly three years after leaving the WWE, Aaron found himself back in the company and reported to their FCW developmental territory, where he developed a new and improved intellectual savior character by the name of Damien Sandow. He would return to the main roster where he continuously insulted his inferior opponents and challenged for numerous championships. Sandow would entry the history books by winning the Money in the Bank ladder match and soon captured the appreciation of the audience. After weeks of many hilarious impersonations, he found an alliance with The Miz where he became his stunt double. And although The Miz would be booed out of the building, Sandow's popularity would rapidly rise. The two would become tag team champions. And at WrestleMania 31, in front of over 75,000 fans, Sandow would split from The Miz and became one of the hottest acts on Raw and SmackDown. Sandow and the WWE would once again part ways, and he would resume wrestling on the independent scene. He would join Impact Wrestling, where he became the inaugural Impact Grand Champion. Recently, he joined the NWA and is currently the NWA National Champion, where he has become a fixture on their highly acclaimed YouTube show, Power. In addition to being great in the ring, Aaron has found a new passion in acting and certainly has the proper training to engulf himself into a variety of roles. Get fired up as it's about to get real, raw, and inspiring with Aaron Stevens. All right, here we are. Hey. So excited. Me too. Dude, I haven't seen you since 2016. I know, right? That's crazy. You disappeared and I disappeared. Mm -hmm. You left May. Yes. And yep. I left in August. What wow. a sad year for WWE. Wow. I know. I know. Wow. Yeah, that, was, that was a rough one. Just kidding. But, um, I have to say, it was really sad to see you go. Oh, I was, thank I you. was sad. I was shocked. I was sad. I was shocked. Uh -huh. I was sad. Uh -huh. With like everyone across the world. Seriously. Oh, yeah. Thank you. How did it feel for you to have that much of so many people going, wait, what? I, I was pretty overwhelmed. Um, and I actually never really discussed that because, um, uh, well, number one, I don't do that many interviews, but that's the first time anyone's ever asked me that. And that was, um, yeah, I, I was a little shocked at uh, the response I was getting just from everyone everywhere. And, like, I, I did a couple of shows um, before I walked away from wrestling altogether after that. I remember taking, I think it was four or five months where I, I just kind of toured and wanted to meet fans on a more intimate level, like, yeah. At the smaller shows where I could kind of thank them for all the support, and uh, and I was actually blown away when I did that. And then there was like you know like the media, um, a lot of interviews I've did and stuff like that. Um, like Rolling Stone, that was the most read article on the front page of Rolling Stone, which I was blown away wow. by that. Uh, that was like whoa, okay, that's kind of cool, you know. Yeah. Um, so there were definitely that, um, but I was also like in a sense relieved that uh, I could move on to the next chapter. It, it was. 
it wasn't like this big emotional, you know, oh, I'm not with the company anymore. I, I just felt like, it? no. And that's kind of strange too. You know, yeah. I, I, I was expecting like more, I don't want to say like heavy feelings, but I was just like, oh, okay, cool. That was awesome. And wow. I just, I'm going to be moving on. And uh, yeah, so that was just, that was uh, kind of, that, that was shocking to me too. This came as a shock to you, right? When you got released? No, I actually, because um, I, I, I just, you know, I, I look at pro wrestling a little differently. Um, I've always kind of looked at it as just, it's, it's entertainment, but it's the entertainment business. Okay. And, um, you know, people have been very, very complimentary in terms of like, you know, oh, well, the fan response you've always got, whether you were a heel or a baby face or mm -hmm. trying to make people laugh or hate you or whatever, um, has been good. And I've gotten, you know, a lot of positive feedback. And they said, they should have done more with you. They should have done more with you. Well, ultimately, it's like all we can do is play the characters that we're given. It's no different than, um, than in like film and television mm -hmm. or in live theater or anything where you're cast in a role. Do the best you can with it, knock it out of the park, and go from there. And um, once I kind of adopted that mentality and uh, and kind of just put it in like my own personal philosophy, um, I felt like, especially towards my last year there, that look, I've done everything I wanted to do here. You know, I've had my WrestleMania moment and everything, and yeah, it would have been nice to win the world title, but you know, I didn't need it because the response I would get, I would get. Yeah. world champion responses all the time, whether I was getting people to hate me, yeah. laugh, cheer me, whatever. And I, I, I had that moment at um, the Battle Royal at WrestleMania to where... Right. WrestleMania when, um, 31. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... um, And I know it was like with show and I I was heard... Or I was hearing rumors, okay, you're going to win it and this is where you and Miz are going to go. And then that day, show was winning. I went, all right, well, I mean, nothing you can do there. Oh, you know? so you didn't know till that day no. that actually show was winning. No. Wow. And... Um, so show was cool enough where he gave Miz and I the floor. Um, we did what we had to do in like that response right there. I remember like when I was about to turn on him and I shook my head for like the second time and the people just started coming up. It was like in there I'm having this, this epiphany, which is not the best time to necessarily have one in you front did? of, you know, almost 90,000 people. But yeah. I'm like, yeah, my, my career is good. Like I'm, I'm good on the inside oh, wow. because I don't have to justify myself to anyone anymore you know before it was like oh yeah like winning the world titles like winning an Oscar um, and, and I get that but it's like the Oscar with one person dictating who wins right you don't have right. the Academy right um, that just natural feedback from the people and it was something that was organic it wasn't something that was like forced down their throats and everything kind of justified me as a performer to where I was like oh yeah well, I'm good. I'm good. And I, I know I waited a year. It's not like I yeah. said, okay, grab my bags and walk out of the stadium. No, I, right. I, I waited. And I wanted to see what they would do with me creatively. And, uh, and again, at the same time, still getting on top, pitching ideas and yeah. everything. And then when I just kind of saw it, it, it wasn't really going anywhere. Yeah. Um, and again, this is nothing personal against anybody in the company, but you know, whatever reasons, I mean, mm -hmm. and fans ask me that all the time, like, well, what are the reasons? What really happened? What really happened? Um, I was just kind of, I don't want to say over it because maybe I thought I was over it at the time and, and mm -hmm. wanting to move on. And, um, and that's, that's kind of what happened. And then I, I did a little stint at uh, Impact for, for a while. And then uh, just kind of like, you know, some of the business dealings and stuff, I, I said, you know what, I need to just walk away completely because mm -hmm. this has been such a part of my life for so long. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm one of those people who I, I kind of like, I'm back and forth, right? Okay. It's great to have a comfort zone and like the camaraderie in wrestling is, you know, it's yeah. amazing. You know, yeah. it's like we haven't seen each other in years and it was like, I oh know. my God, Lillian, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. Right, yeah. It's like seeing you again, but you know, yeah. and just picking up where we left off. Yeah. 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 And, um, but at the same time, I think you have to be comfortable outside of your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, and trust me, like LA is the last place I wanted to go. You know what I mean? Really? I was just like, oh, here we go. Um, but I went ahead and um, now life is even stranger, you know, right. so it, it, it's just taken a few turns, but they've been good. Because now you're in the entertainment world in a different way. Yeah, yeah, with one foot back in wrestling again, uh, which yeah, is like... Yeah, I want to definitely talk like, yeah. about all mm -hmm. of this. All right, so one thing that I want to know, though, is you're on such a high from WrestleMania, which mm -hmm. is amazing that you say that. And I love mm -hmm. the fact that you took that moment in. Mm -hmm. And I think, it, I know you're saying it was crazy and maybe in the wrong mm -hmm. time. No. That's when you need to take those moments mm -hmm. in when, when it's happening because mm -hmm. 
when you leave and if you don't stop and do that, then all of a sudden you're like, wait, where did, th did I even do that? And it went yeah. so fast, but you soak that moment in, which was so fulfilling for you mm -hmm. and gratifying. When though you started losing after that, mm -hmm. how was that for you mentally? Because you're on such a high mm -hmm. and you're, you're really pitching and working hard mm -hmm. and wanting to mm -hmm. take it even to the next mm -hmm. level. And it's now it's just losing, losing and your character's kind of getting lost and yeah. How was that for you mentally? Um, you know, it, it wasn't the easiest time. It was very much like, okay, well, how do we get out of Mizdow? And then I explained to them, give me three minutes on TV, I'll take care of it. And, uh, and I, it's weird. I don't remember a lot of locations in my career. I remember a couple, but we were in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So it wasn't like it was in the Northeast where they're um, a little more cynical. And like, I've, I've always been oh, kind right. of well-received there. Um, Boston boy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but this was in Green Bay, and I went out there and I just talked to them as me. I just said, look, I was like five years ago, I came to WWE with a blue bathrobe and using a bunch of $5 words. And just, it was a conversation and it worked. And I remember coming to the back and, you know, Road Dog was very, very happy with it. And I guess they were happy with it in the truck. And then the next week I'm dressed as Randy Savage with no explanation. After I do this promo on Raw, then I'm just going to start being me. Right. So, got that over. And, um, and I was with Joe Henning. Yeah. And then, you know, we had to stop doing that because it was just making the most of it. You know, was, was it what I wanted to be doing in terms of, like, um, the role, per se, to where, like, we'd come out and they'd hit Randy Savage's music and mm -hmm. Hulk Hogan's music and um, we, we'd just go have a party. It was fun. And, and I tell you what, like, I, I love working with Joe Henning. Yeah. That was, it was awesome. Joe's one of the best. Um, but, you know, again, in terms of, like, a logical progression of a character, no, it wasn't ideally what I wanted to be doing. Um, but again, I was with my buddy Joe Henning, and we, I mean, we were having a blast. Like, yeah. that, that's one thing, we had an absolute blast with that. And then, you know, one day that kind of went away, and then really after that, um, I was on a full-time live event schedule, and I didn't see the light of day. I couldn't even get a dark match at TV. Mm. Like, I was off TV completely yeah. for a, like six or nine months or something like that. I remember and, um, talking to you during that time, and you yeah, were just like... Yeah, I was just like, I didn't know him. Like, and yeah. that, that's the thing. Like, no one... If they had said, hey, cut your hair, gain weight, lose weight, go to long tights, give us something, you know, I would have done it. And, and right. my, my whole thing was, I enjoy being a low-maintenance talent. Um, give me my marching orders. If I want to change something in the promo a little bit, you know, we'll say what we got to say. Right. Let everyone know. And, and I, don't, I don't need to be kind of like knocking on the boss's office every week and following them around every two seconds. It's like, no, I'm a professional. I'm paid to do my job. Right. Um, whatever is on the agenda for the, the day, go ahead, do it, make it the best you can, and get to the next town and do it. Um, yeah. And you know what? Maybe, like, is that one of the things, like, I do not have a reputation as a politicker. You know, right. I, I was always like, you can go backstage and try to, you know, do all that um, talking, shall mm -hmm. we say, to be nice. Mm -hmm. um, Either way, when we go out there, like, I'm responsible for my performance. Uh, I will make this the best performance I can. Like, yeah. I don't want to be selfish in the sense of, like, outshining anybody, uh, but make it the best you can for the live audience. And if someone can't keep up with me, that's on them. Mm -hmm. Win or lose. Yeah. So. You've always seen that way, though, to mm -hmm. me. Oh, thank you. From, like, just, you've got such a heart of gold. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You really do. Not many people know that so about me. I was very, like, <laughs> I was selective at who I talked to. I've always... Yeah, you you were quiet, but yeah. when we when we talked, we hit it off immediately, and yes. just I could see your mm. heart and your mm. passion and mm. your love for this, but also your like, what can I do? Like the mm. moment of of thinking, like just like you just said, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. Like yeah. this frustration, right? When yeah. things you want things to be under your control and they're yeah. kind of not in your control. Yeah, but but that's a life lesson, though. You right. Know, that so was... I wanted to see what did you learn from that. No, um, when you can't control something, there's no sense stressing out over it because, you know, I'm, I, w I was at a very stressful place and it was affecting me in all areas because I'm like, my God, I just need something to sink my teeth into and mm -hmm. then no matter what I do, it'll work somehow. Just, um, we'll, we'll figure it out out there. Um, but then again, it was the frustration of not being able to perform, like to be in an, a building 12 hours a day and like the one thing that I do, because like for me, it was never about the money or anything. It was like when I'm out there, I'm a different person and... You know, it, it was mm -hmm. ab about that. And, you know, again, a full-time house show schedule, and I wasn't spending much time at home, and I was just like, there was no rest for me. Like, because it was constantly there. Because, again, I was doing house shows and doing great. Um, TV, though, I, that was with Raw and SmackDown. Um, and then I'm home a day and a half. 
Yeah. And there was never any break from it. There was never any time away from it for me. You know, let's go home, do your laundry, pay your bills, go out there, have fun at house shows, and then go to TV and act like you don't exist. Which, again, was it done personally to me? I don't know. You know, there's, there's a lot of moving parts, yeah. and I think, you know, we all tend to be, um, rightfully so, somewhat egocentric in the entertainment business. Like, okay, yeah. well, what's going on tonight? We have to be. Like, how does this affect me? And from right. no different than, like, okay, what's your weight? How am I going to say this? And right. how do you want, you know, right. um, to the performer level of, like, okay, well, what, what do I have to work with today? Yeah. You know, like, what, what canvas are we painting on? Yeah. Um, and, or... Because that's a mental game. Because that's oh, the yeah. one thing that I even mm -hmm. saw. I... It was so different for me, and I would mm -hmm. see this in the ladies' locker room, mm -hmm. for example. They would show mm -hmm. up, and they're going, oh, I wonder if I'm on tonight, right? Mm -hmm. They're looking at the mm -hmm. card, or waiting, or waiting, or waiting, mm -hmm. where I knew every week what I was doing. Yeah. So I, I knew I was on every week. I knew yeah. what my job was every yeah. week. So when I show up in the building, I've got a purpose. I've got an yeah. agenda. I've got all that, right? I don't have to stress. Am I on? Am I mm -hmm. not? Am I mm -hmm. on? You know, so I always felt for you guys mm -hmm. not knowing if you're on, and if you're mm -hmm. not on, and consistently not mm -hmm. on. Why? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and that what was. What can like, I do about it? Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a very weird time because that's that was like really the only time that that's ever happened to me. Um, yeah. To where they're giving nothing now. I'm like, okay, so who knows why it was done? Um, but you know, and again, I, like the life lesson I've taken out of it was just be adaptable. Like sometimes, you know, when I'm out there, it's like, yeah, give me anything, I'll adapt to it, and we'll we'll make it a memorable segment of TV. You know. Okay. Um, but, okay, you're not putting me out there. It kind of goes a step deeper. Which, all right, as an individual now, what do I have to do? And that's when I said, you know what, maybe I, I want to kind of take control over my own career a little more. And I, I started having the thoughts of coming out here and, uh, and getting into the film business. And, and like, one of the mm -hmm. things with me is, um, and this may be a character flaw or maybe it'll work for me, I don't know. But, see, I had no problem walking away from a business that I, I truly did love at one point. You know, was I, mm -hmm. was I burned out? Absolutely. But to walk away and say, I'm starting from the ground up. And um, it's one of those things, be careful what you wish for, because uh, I eventually got it uh, about a year and a half later. So you get started from the ground up? Yeah. You know, I, I, I was of the philosophy, like, okay, well, I, I kind of have a little bit of a name for wrestling and stuff. Yeah. And maybe we can parlay that into something. And, um, and sure. you know, again, Hollywood's just, it, it's such a um, beguiling town to where, you know, everyone's got an angle and things like that. But... I uh, ended up meeting a lady on a complete, complete whim, um, mm -hmm. and she looked at me and she's like, all right, I'm in charge of your career from now on, you're not going to pay me, but you're not going to do anything unless I say. And I'm thinking like, okay, like, you know, because there's that, that Hollywood bravado out right. here with everybody in the entertainment business, and she's like, all right, so, yeah, I'm not an agent, I'm not a manager, all right, I'm a dog groomer, but you're just going to listen to me. So I'm thinking like, all right, this is bizarre. Okay. Um, Made a couple calls. All of a sudden, the next thing I know, um, I'm in the Screen Actors Guild. You know, I, I did a couple projects. One of the right. one of the first projects I did was with uh, Jonathan Banks from Breaking Bad. Oh he played wow! My, yeah, I was like, I that was the first thing I walked into. I'm going, um, hi, you know, like <laughs> okay, they're right there. So this is like, all right, this is kind of legit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then um, you know, got got into SAG, and then um, she's like, if I'm in charge of your career, you are not going to do anything unless I say, and you're going to act how I say, and you're going to study. And you're gonna just your your wrestling image, it's gone. Mm. So I'm like, all right. So there's no like getting into movies, and you know, because it'd be nice to kind of you know, build the IMDb up, as they say. Right. Um, no, I did a bunch of roles that were completely, completely not me. Like one of them, I had to, and it's it's funny. I'm shaved right now. I just had to shave for yeah. another role. Um, but like the first one I did when I had to shave the first time. Yeah. I'm going. Oh my god, I look nothing like me. You know, I had these glasses on. It was like a uh, period. I think yeah. the 1950s. So strange. Um, but she made me take roles that wrestlers wouldn't do. Oh. And like we, we watched like Inherit the Wind and we're watching Humphrey Bogart and all these old people. Yeah. Um, well, it turns out she is third generation Hollywood. Her grandfather used to own Raleigh Studios, which merged with, I, th I think it was they merged with MGM. Wow. Um, her mother was an actress, like a really like a legendary acting coach as well. Yeah. Uh, and a writer for all the old shows, and she had this amazing acting class in, in Malibu, and she just passed away. She was 98 years old oh. last January. Um, but, um, but yeah, this lady, her name is Sherman. Um, mm. She is just kind of gone, and then, like, next thing I know, I, I do that for about a year, which I'm like, oh, you know, I'm looking at, she goes, I don't care about social media, I don't care about any of that right now, you're going to learn how to act. And then get a call, did uh, a couple episodes of an NBC show, Midnight Texas. 
Okay. Which was funny because <clears throat> that was my first network show. Okay. And I'm sitting there, and I'm. Uh, they call they call catering crap services. By the way, <laughs> I had to like because I, I was used to my hey, where's catering? You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 of course. Um, and I'm sitting there, and, and all the actors are really cool. Like, oh yeah, so who's your agent? And I was like, well, I kind of don't have one. I have a dog groomer, and uh, <laughs> like that was it. So it made for an interesting story. And the thing is, like, she's such a hardcore vegan. Um, like she, just like she has like spies everywhere because she's like you had chicken fajitas for lunch, didn't you? Like she knew what I was eating. Whoa. Yeah, so she's she's one of those people that like knows. Everything. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> and then that kind of like led to, um, you know, I, I think there were some opportunities there um, for Midnight Texas, but the show ended up getting canceled and did an, like, two more indies uh, and then ended up uh, with a guest starring role in Magnum P.I., mm. which was really, really cool. That was like a, um, you know, it was three weeks in Hawaii, or a little over three weeks in Hawaii. So I'm like, I'm not complaining <laughs> yeah, there. And, right? and with the, the union thing, yeah, it was Labor Day weekend. So like I had almost four days off in a row, like with the way wow. that they shot. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty good. Yeah. So overall, has it been going good with the acting? Great, yeah. Okay. It was great. It was just kind of finding myself because it was like I. She's like the Mr. Miyagi yeah. of training. Um, you know, her and another uh, lady right now, like her and um, Liz, are both kind of in charge of my career. And um, she was so set on like you're going to learn this from the ground up. I want you to be able to, you know, do an emotional scene. Like she, Robin Williams is a good example, yeah. I think, where he could do humor and then yeah. stuff. So he, he's one of my favorites but like it's like studying that and like aspiring to be that but at the same time being myself like she's she's very very good at getting wow. the best out of me so wow so now that she's gone who are you studying with uh no it was her mom that passed oh, her um mom so, passed. so yeah she's no still here. she's okay. still there yeah okay, and good. it's it's crazy so you know it, the typical hollywood story you come out and you, know, you get a manager and keep going but no like i'll i'll get a call but like we have to go save some cows so she she was driving by yeah. Um, a place and there were cows that were going to be sold for slaughter so she bought the cows we then had to get a trailer and load the cows on the trailer and I do have a little bit of experience with you know agriculture and, okay. and farming and things like that livestock if you will um, so we had to kind of we got some panels we got them in the trailer and then they're now at um, a ranch where they make fertilizer so the cows are, are really happy there and oh, it's, wow. uh, yeah but then so that's one day and then she'll be like I have a meeting set up for you go here uh, and then you know you're meeting with you know, someone you shouldn't be meeting with kind of deal. It's like, oh, how did I get in this like room? Top, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So she's it, it, seeing something in you. Yeah. So she's she's something, and she's she's funny. She's uh, she's definitely got her own way. Are you um, enjoying studying? The oh, I love acting? it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I absolutely love it because, like, to me, right, it was what we did was so theatrical, right, yeah. in the WWE, and um, I, for some reason, like the the last part of my career, it just was partial to that. I, I think with my character and like the, the original Sandow, mm -hmm. you know, that was so character heavy that it was kind of method acting before I even knew what method acting was really. Yeah. And um, so now it's it's kind of weird. Like when you get a character, it's you create him and then uh, go to your headspace and then know your lines and forget all the, the mechanics of it. You know, because right. like when you say this line, say it this way. And, and like there, there's different... Um, Different things. What's the writer's intent? Right. You know, um, what's the writer trying to uh, convey there? And but you have a natural talent for this because even in WWE, like everything that you did, the mic, that's the one thing people just loved oh, about you, yeah. you. Thank you. Was your ability to speak. Oh, thank you. Thank and you. there's been some great athletes, mm -hmm. as we know, in wrestling. Mm -hmm. But when they get their hands on a microphone, mm -hmm. it goes mm -hmm. flat. Mm -hmm. And so when you have somebody that can wrestle and also just oh, be really you. good on the mic, mm -hmm. that's why you were just over oh thank you so much thank you just and i think people could really just see mm -hmm. your heart like no joke well it, it was a sincere performance yeah. you know even the mizdow you know yeah. it was <clears throat> the mizdow still like I, I was never told to wrestle the invisible man you know it oh, was really no no i, I was with miz i'm like well i'm getting paid to be here we're on raw um i'm a stunt double and that, that was just in my head well he fell down i guess i'll fall down and, and study him and then I'm um, like, all right, I got away with that. Then I think it was like he went to go do something to a guy and uh, it was a figure four, I think. And then like I go to put the figure four on the Invisible Man. And that's when I came back to uh, the gorilla position, which is, as we know, the position right after you go up the ramp. I get, you know, the glasses on the end of the nose. Yes. Vince, you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> yeah. That was great. Do whatever you want. I'll be the only one that'll be able to pull you back. He goes, you green light. Okay, I didn't talk to him for like nine months. Wow. And that was what missed that. Yeah, crazy, right? Wow. So, and, and that just, 
that just propelled it. Yeah, that was another... weird. And like, we wouldn't talk about like everyone thinks like, oh, it must have been so hard. I mean, obviously, if like we had a finish and stuff, we would. Yeah. You know, everyone needs to kind of be in the right place for the finish. But right. I mean, a lot of that stuff, and that goes pay per view, live TV, SmackDown. We would just do. Like it, it was, we were so like in sync of like he knew. Okay, if I'm gonna fall down, Aaron's gonna go do something stupid. The people are gonna react. Then we go into the like it, it was a it was all timing with that, and that, that's just a testament to how great Miz is. Well, I was just gonna yeah. say, how did you like working with Miz? Oh, oh, awesome. I mean, really, do not have a bad word to say about that guy. And I, we had fun. I mean, yeah. uh, some of the the matches we had with the Usos on the house shows. Yeah. Oh my God, it was so so fun. Amazing. Mm. So I want to talk about what you're doing now and what mm -hmm. brought you back into mm. back into wrestling. But before we do that, I and everyone who listens to this show, like mm. you said, you were a fan of the show, <laughs> which I'm so mm. excited about. Thank mm. you. You know that I like to really dive in as to the past. I want to get to mm. know who you are, like yeah. some of the things that you say that you have, um, mm. you know, your performance. Why? You know, we'll just, mm -hmm. let's, so let's go back. I know you were mm -hmm. born in Massachusetts. Yeah. Yeah, so mm -hmm. tell me what life is about, brothers, sisters? Yeah, uh, I have a younger sister, but um, grew up in a small town, uh, North Oxford, and um, just have big family, and we're all really, really close. Like, I just spent a few months with them, yeah. um, <clears throat> you know, for the holidays and everything, and it was awesome, but... Um, you mean, like, extended, big Oh, yeah, extended very, very big extended family. Okay. And, um, yeah, so, and, and we've all remained pretty close, which is nice. That's um, cool. It's really, really cool to be able to do that, and um, just wanted to be a wrestler from the time I was about five. And, and, Five years yeah. old. Okay. What was it about wrestling? Like, how did you discover it? You were watching well, it on TV? No, not exactly. Uh, I was in, I think it was uh, some kind of a story that doesn't exist anymore. I'm not sure. But it was. I was with my mom, and there was, like, the arcade games, like, the old school arcade games after the checkout line. And uh, she's like, if I was going to behave myself, I'd get to go play one. So she gives me a quarter or something to go play one. And I just kind of like randomly put it in, got on the stool, and I remember playing. It was a wrestling game. Oh. And I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, I was five. I was yeah. just pressing buttons. And, and I remember the guy beat me and started taunting me. And I got upset. And I was like, well, that's, I'm going to go be a wrestler. Like, <laughs> you know, who's that guy I think he is? Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> it was funny. just something I always knew. And I, I played sports in high school. Um, went, to a, um, went to a Catholic high school, Holy Name, Central Catholic, which. Uh, How was that? Awesome. Yeah, um, in fact, I just met with um, uh, a classmate of mine who's been my friend since pretty much preschool. We went. It was funny. Like we did preschool through college together. It just happened that way. Mm. It was pretty funny. Um, and then uh, the now principal, who was our English teacher, who I've always um, just kind of kept in contact with. And when I became uh, the intellectual savior, Mr. Reynolds was very, very happy with that. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. He he was very. Uh, just proud that that was one of his English students, and I was using all these five dollar oh, words. So yeah, that's that was amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, but but you say that um, so Catholic school, you say it's great. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I, I loved it. You. Like w we were the um, in in Central Massachusetts. There's levels of Catholic schools, and, and we were considered not not the not the bad. I mean, like like the bad. But we were like, oh, holy name, those people. But we would always like do really well in sports and everything. And and we had we had a lot of fun. Like it, it was yeah. definitely, um, I, I wouldn't have have gone any other way. Like like holy name is something that I'm still. What sports? Uh, I played football and basketball. Okay. Yeah. And then I actually started training to wrestle when I was a junior. So that kind of took precedence over. So you started you know, training in school. Yeah. In yeah, school. Yeah. Okay. All right. So mm -hmm. from that, and you were 16 at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then you started. When did you start training with Killer? Well, when Rossi? I was sixteen. Yeah. Oh, like he, right he, then. Yeah, he agreed to take me, and my parents had to sign a permission slip, and of course, I had to keep my grades up and yeah. everything. Um, but you did it but, in school first, and then you transitioned. Or no, I was like, I want to be a pro wrestler, and I found a way, and then would go oh, to so not Malden in the school. But yeah, while no, no, yeah, like, while I was in school, it. like on weekends and stuff, I would go to Malden and you know get the um, the tar beat out of me, and then. Like, I, I was, like, the biggest kid in my high school, but then I'd go there, and I was with a bunch of grown men. Yeah. And so it was quite a, uh, a contrast. And once I started working, like, senior year, I'd be in, in homeroom, and, you know, the, the nun would be telling me to tuck my shirt in and do this. And then a couple hours later, I'm somewhere in front of, you know, we independent was um, independent wrestling was really, really big at the time. So you'd have, like, 1,500 people at a show and get the chair swung at me and all this crazy stuff. So it was quite a, uh, a juxtaposition, if you will. Right. And, uh, and I grew up, I think, in some respects pretty fast. Mm. Um, but then, you know, again, the, due to the wrestling lifestyle, um, in other areas, you don't necessarily have to grow up sometimes. So there's a, yeah. you know, um, th there was always that kind of balance. And I, I've 
yeah. I had an extended uh, early to mid 20 period of my life, you know, and, and, and also like it's due to the nature of the business too, right? Um, yeah. Like you have to relieve stress somehow because we are, um, especially in, in, in working in television too, it's such a high pressure situation. Yeah. Live. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> live. Well, yeah, I mean, that's it's it. not even just TV, it's live yeah. TV. One yeah. take. And, um, you know, when you get used to it, you're like, oh, okay, whatever. But then when you actually kind of remove yourself and think about it, like, oh, okay, yeah, of course. And then you got to get in the car and drive to the next town and do it all over again. Yeah. So, um, yeah, like, like in, in some respects, you can just kind of, you know, put off real world stuff, as I would say. And, um, again, strange as it is, is now that I've been kind of out of that, that world for a while, uh, or, or I've had some time to kind of go, and like I've kind of like grown up in other ways and, and kind of like learned some different things, of, you know, just life stuff in general. Mm -hmm. um, but the lessons I learned there uh, in that world have, you know, prepared me here, and especially for Hollywood. Yeah. So, okay. Well, yeah. they say if you can work at WWE or well, wrestling, yeah, yeah. you can work anywhere. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, like with, with the, um, especially like with some of like the fight stuff that I'm just now being allowed to do. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, it's like, okay, and you hit a guy and then, oh, wow, that was good. Can we do it again? Okay. Like, did something look bad? No, no, we just need to do it again. And because yeah. they want different camera angles and things. Right. But um, no, I, I, I've gotten to work with actually some awesome fight coordinators um, who have been really, really cool. Um, like Jim Vickers is one who's just amazing. Um, and it, it's just, it's funny, like your your wrestling skills, they translate very, very well. And especially yeah. like in, with the physicality stuff too. Yeah. Which is, yeah. Wow. And then like there's different like timing things that you, you just kind of can naturally parlay into something else. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for you then, if, if Catholic school was mm -hmm. great, mm -hmm. family is amazing, mm -hmm. what was your biggest struggle growing up? Um, my biggest struggle go growing up, um, I, don't, I think it was because I couldn't grow up fast enough. Um, I, I was so focused on like, I want to be a wrestler, I want to be a wrestler, and like, that was it. Like, I decided I was going to do it, and it wasn't, you know, I have this pipe dream. It was like, no, this is what I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to do. Um, so it's almost like the same thing with you wanted to be an actor, but you want it now, and she's saying, "Well, we got to do all this stuff yes, first. Yes. So patience. Yeah, and and, and patience has always, always been um, a, a struggle for me um, because it's like you know you have goals like let's go, let's do it, and um, and especially like, and I th there were times where trust me, like I, I've had some some discussions with uh, her name is Sherman, like why am I doing this? You know, I, I should either do these roles. She's like, no, just. And, and she'll tell me, she's like, shut up and listen to me. Like, we, we mm -hmm. have a plan. And it's great because, again, like, I, I've really been at this about two years, like, going out with her. And then, you know, to get a guest starring role on Magnum, which is a network show. Yeah. Like, that's, that doesn't happen too often. Like, like right. there are people that wait years and years. Right. And, I mean, even to get in the, uh, in the union, which yeah. I, I've kind of been spoiled in that respect because she's like, you're going to get in the union. We're going to put you in a project. Here we go. And we're going to do it the right way. And, like, you know, yeah. she, she knows all this stuff. So... And, and especially like in speaking to other actors, like people have been out here for four or five years and not in the union. Right. So it's like I'm so lucky in that respect. Yeah. Um, but like I said, you know, I, I was telling her where unless you've been in that WWE mode where like you have to be somewhere all the time, you know, whether you got to be going to the next town, you have an appearance, you have um, media, mm -hmm. um, you got to go over your match, you got to go to the gym. And um, there's always that sense of. Do, you know, do, do, yeah, do, they're, they're do, that do, forward do. progression, you know, yeah. like we're on a mission. Right. Where out here, you know, months can go by where you hear nothing. Yeah. And to me, it's like, well, hey, I live in Malibu. Uh, there's a beach right there. Let's make use of it, yeah. uh, which, I, which I do do more of nowadays. Yeah. Um, I was just very much like, okay, let's I get yeah. my career going. But now I, I've learned to kind of relax in, in my... Um, my kind of just letting go of expectations of when and... Like they call it like the art of allowing. So maybe so, this is what you need too. Yeah. You've been doing this now, as you say, you've, well, obviously it sounds like you've always been this way as a kid. Mm -hmm. Very good in studies. Uh, yeah, assume, because it's, it's good. I had to make the honor roll so I could wrestle. So that was it. That's why okay. I did it. My, my parents knew how I was. They just, you okay. know, otherwise I'd be like, this is useless information, which it wasn't. My parents were very, very good. I mean, yeah. and, and that's why I do think you should try. In retrospect, I would have liked to study even harder. But, um, you know, at the time. Yeah. But you've been on a go, go, go mm -hmm. regimen. Even yeah. when you got wrestling, even though you wanted to be, you know, big yeah. already, you were yeah. still, every week, yeah. you were training, right? Every yeah. single week, doing something every day. 
when you're in WWE, you're go, go, yeah. go, go, go mm -hmm. to the point you're so burnt out. Mm -hmm. And now you're working in this, and because it's not at the same pace, mm -hmm. you're questioning it, right? It's like, yeah. or you don't know what to do with yourself. Yeah. Which is almost a blessing that, well, obviously you believe in God, mm -hmm. Catholic. So it's probably God's way of saying, you gotta, I got to give you something that allows you to just like chill and... Yeah. And be okay with this. And it's yeah. not always about the go, go, go. And trust mm -hmm. me, I'm a type A personality. Mm -hmm. I get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I'm always like, okay, we got to do this, you know, whatever. And now more and more I realize when I have time or I'll set myself time to meditate, or mm -hmm. which I was like, meditate? I can't meditate. But I've loved it. Does it make all, same here, because that, that makes all the difference in the world. Oh. Just to, and, and you know what, it, it's... There are so many different ways of doing it, right? It's just yeah. like with um, there's so many different um, systems of spirituality and, yes. and philosophy and, and whatever you do, but just quieting your own mind and just being able to get in touch that that's helped me immensely. Yeah. I, I I think one of my favorite things to do is just you get out there and whether it's on a beach or in the um, like a forest or up in the canyons or whatever, mm -hmm. and you just just kind of be. Right. Um, that's helped me more than anything. Yeah. yeah. So and and it's amazing when this happens as far mm. as like just slow up. You've been mm. on the go 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 train mm. for a, a little too long. Mm. Try something different mm. and then it's almost like it leaps. I mean, like it mm. advances in such a mm. leap forward way where you just said it. You got in the union, then you got this Magnum yeah. PI and you got so things mm. are happening. They're mm. just happening instead of you having to do all these little small roles and yeah. burn yourself out yeah. and you know. Yeah. And deal with a lot of what I also say is uh, the ego that is around Hollywood with yeah. everyone trying to get noticed and trying yeah. to make it. It looks to me like you're doing it, though, for the love of the art. And it's not about mm. you trying to feed your ego. I mean, we yeah. all have some ego. Don't get me yeah. wrong. We all do. But it does seem to me like you enjoy. Yeah, you know, because to me, at it, it's bare bones. It's storytelling. It's no different yeah. than what we did in the ring. And um I always thought it was awesome to be able to kind of just put on this mask of whoever character um, you want. And, yeah. and that was like the thing in wrestling that I've, I've I've kind of like thought about it because a few people brought it up to me and where I'm the guy that was never nailed down to one character. Like, right. you know, Intellectual Savior was a very strong character, but then so was Mizdow. And then mm -hmm. like what I'm doing in NWA now is insane. But like I've always had this kind of like fluidity to where like... And I think that's helped me in terms of a relationship with the fans because they were reacting, cheering, boom, it was Aaron. Like, yeah. they, they were the man playing, right. you know, whatever role I was, that, you know, Ms. Dow or whatever Dow I was. Yeah. Um, it was always interesting because they, they could appreciate, like, the performer. And right. I think that has helped me more than anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because... I don't see you being the person that's like, I want to be to Hollywood because I want to be famous. Like, you've been famous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, it, it's, you know, and again, like with fame, it's like I always said, the, the worst thing is you have to be at the airport a little bit earlier if you don't want to shrug people off for getting on. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are some nice perks, right? But, right. you know, I, I'm always, fans pay our salary, so be nice to them, right? Yeah. And, and I, I won't refuse a picture or anything. But sometimes, you know, if it's 5 in the morning, you know, yeah. we've all been on those Wednesdays, yeah. you know, where it's like, ugh. But I'm like always like, you don't want a picture of this right now. Uh, yeah, yes, <laughs> yes, right. We, we, we all have our glasses hand. on. Mm -hmm. I will high-five you. I will mm -hmm. sign whatever you want, but please, not yes. a picture right now. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> uh, I, no, I get it. Same here. And they get it. They're like, would you Same look here. great? And I'm like, well, you think I do? I'm like, oh, <laughs> yep. I'll cringe if I see it, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so well, that's that's really cool mm -hmm. though. That this transition, I do want to. So this is what brought me to to wanting to have you on. Mm -hmm. When I saw this, I and I read this, I was like, wow, there is a story here, um, because I was very impressed as, as to what you wrote. <clears throat> you have I was a feeling picture. Poetic. Your, <laughs> I, I love it. You had a pic, you have a picture of your white boots, mm -hmm. and you said, "Got these bad boys resold." I remember thinking the time I did this that it would absolutely be the last time I ever had it done. Life is funny. Thanks to NWA, I have reconnected with an industry that has been part of my life for a very, very long time. This is me picking up my pen and being the author of my own story. Personally, I did not leave on the note I wanted to. Acting has been good to me and I am still actively pursuing my goals in that arena. These boots, however, 
have more miles on them, goals I have not yet accomplished, and now I realize it's okay to pursue them. In these past few years, I have learned the value of surrounding yourself with genuine and uplifting people. I can honestly say for the first time in my life, I am surrounded by extremely high quality human beings in both my personal and professional life. To anyone who has ever cheered, booed, or even entertained by anything I did, thank you. It may be a cliche, but the best of me in these boots is yet to come. I was feeling really poetic. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so beautiful. Well, I, mean, I never actually read that. I just, you I did like it? to speak to text, check for. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, but no, I obviously, uh, yeah, I agree with everything there. Yeah. What does it feel like when you're hearing it back? What was going on through your mind and why are you back in wrestling, so um, one of the um, the relationship that I had um, I had built um, through my time and impact was with um, with Billy Corgan, mm. and uh, him and I just hit it off. I mean, I, like he is such a fan of this, yeah, and in, in the truest sense of the word, and, and can appreciate um, like the performance of it, and um, and also he's a very very intelligent man, and um, so we had uh, just kind of maintained a friendship and then when he was like I'm starting the NWA again and uh, I was at a point where excuse me sorry I'll do the same mm. cheers mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I was getting a little bit antsy and you know I'm, I'm sure I mean you know this but like Santino and I are very close in real life oh I love him um, and he was getting ready to do this show up uh, in his thing he's like hey it's, it's going to be like my first pro show for battle arts up in Toronto, which is like, come in like, you know what? I'll spend a couple weeks up in Canada. So um, kind of ran around with him, got in the ring, bumped around and was having a, um, was having a good time. And I said, yeah, maybe I could do this. Like I can fall down. It still doesn't hurt. Okay. Um, yeah. But there was no real, no real like fire in there again, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and as a performer, like my thing was, I, I felt like I was collecting a paycheck and on autopilot my last, um, my last, taping with impact or yeah and it's just like I can't do that because you know when you do something like that that's in perpetuity and like the cameras it, it lives forever so um that I was, love that you were real that that's beautiful that oh yeah that but says a lot about you because there's okay. a lot of people out there that they do that they go to work wherever mm -hmm. work is mm -hmm. and they're just going through the motions mm -hmm. and they're not putting themselves in there what they can offer and so mm -hmm. basically, that's stealing money from the company. I love that you have said that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and and again, like even from a selfish standpoint, like I don't want anything less than my best to be out there. That's great. And um, speaks volumes. So again, a couple of years went by, and he was like, "Let's we're, we're bringing back the old studio style wrestling, which is you know obviously like from uh, the early days of WCW and NWA. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of like the Four Horsemen and at the yeah. the little promo table there and everything." Um, I'll check it out. And I just remember I flew in a day early and when I first got in the studio, like I saw it and it was like, oh my God, I've been, <clears throat> excuse me, um, like in a time machine. I was like, oh my God, the ring and it's the old school NWA ring and there's the yeah. announce desk, there's the podium. And I, I like started to get excited. And then, you know, we had an idea for a character like the Hollywood guy, which has evolved into something completely different but I think that's the cool part to where yeah. like I you know and I, I've never been married to any incarnation of me the wrestler like mm -hmm. I, I'm always like let's let's see what's going on so now uh, I am a karate man and it's uh, it's just again so much fun um, you know the question mark is is great to work with it, it's, it's a blast um, but overall too it, it's like you look at the NWA and it's a lot of the things that are fun about wrestling that fans actually want that sometimes you don't see a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like there's there's a lot of bells and whistles and, um, you know, there's a very um, big emphasis placed on, you know, a lot of like the high spots, the big dives and the um, a lot of acrobatics mm -hmm. and things, which is great. But you wonder, like, why aren't the fans as engaged? Like, why? They'll cheer a move, but they're not as invested in the characters. And I yeah. think it's like, you know, for a lack of an emphasis on storytelling, right. which with NWA, I mean, yes, we, there's, it's a modern style of wrestling, right? We have high flyers and crazy stuff going on, but we also, we tell stories. That's you know, there, there's yeah. the, the, the promo, did, like just the setup of it, it, it's amazing. So it, that to me, it rekindled um, 
it rekindled my love for it. And uh, if I could do a, a cheap plug, you can go to, uh, it's on streaming YouTube, you go to NWA, or I'm sorry, National Wrestling Alliance, and it's every Tuesday at 6.05 for NWA Power, so you check it out. Oh, it's, great, uh, it, great, it's, great. It's, it's really cool, and it's doing really well. And so is that fulfilling you as much as being in WrestleMania with millions, you know, with thousands of people in the arena, but then obviously millions of people watching worldwide? Yeah, and um, to me, if something's good, it's good. You know, um, obviously, like at uh, a studio, it's a much more intimate setting than at uh, a big stadium. But if it's good, it's good. And I've always been kind of um, just, excuse me again. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. It's a little dry here in California. Yeah. <clears throat> You know, with um, like to me, it's it's an energetic exchange, right? Like you're, I treat an audience like one living, breathing mass, um, and you're having a conversation sometimes with uh, words, sometimes with what you're doing in the ring, and um, as a performer, and I, I recently just had this like fully click to where, no matter where I am, like my head just shuts down and I can't see anybody, but I hear them, mm-hmm. and I adjust my performance accordingly there. And uh, it's it's just like a different place you are cognitively, and in acting, you know, I'm I'm getting to do that too, which is right. it's a lot of fun. Um, wrestling, it's just I think with the live audience, I go there faster because and it's yeah. the one thing I miss. Like when you're you have that instant feedback to where you know you do a uh, a take for film and everything's quiet, of course, and you do it. There's and nothing. You do the scene, it's like nobody popped, and like oh yeah, this is which is why yeah. the rock said that Mm -hmm. he loves to come in Mm -hmm. and have these Mm -hmm. moments back in front of an audience and Mm -hmm. you see him in the turnbuckle like Mm -hmm. when you see him smelling and like yeah he's soaking in that energy because that's what he says he doesn't get that on set yeah i mean there's no way to duplicate that like and and there is and that's the one thing in, in wrestling there is no way to possibly duplicate that feeling so and it's okay that you've had that in a smaller yeah amount of people yeah. yeah yeah and like with NWA, if they're booing when i'm out there good i'm doing my job it's awesome it, yeah. it's just it's still the same thing i mean i i get the same feeling as you know when i was in an arena as i do there and uh and if, if anything else like there's more because i have so much creative freedom in nwa yeah um it, it really is amazing like the the whole organization is great to work for i mean what does it tape at atlanta in atlanta yeah. so every week uh, no every go? about every six weeks we're there every six weeks and yeah. then you, do you tape how many shows uh, we do about six shows. Okay. Yeah. So, so that there's about, one yeah. every six. So mm-hmm. it does air every single week. Yeah. On yeah, Tuesdays. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's pretty exciting. Mm-hmm. So yeah. what about, how do you, I mean, the, what would you say, uh, what, the, the woman that's helping you, what's her name? Sherman. Sherman. Mm-hmm. What does she think about you being in WA? Um, she, she's all for it. You she's know, it, it's, okay. uh, it's kind of, it gets me out in public again. And um, I think she's comfortable enough now where as an actor, I can be um, coached. Yeah. To where like I don't we're saying right when when a camera's right here and I I have eyes the size of grapefruits so I got these yeah. giant like you know <laughs> and that so when I go like this you know if we're at the Staples Center the person in the last row needs to see my facial expression right. if the camera's right here and it's weird with me like I can just think something and then it like I just you know just just think it and these will take care of themselves so mm-hmm. it, it's it was really a uh, that that was the most difficult thing. Oh, yeah, you have to downplay everything. everything. Yes, yes. Even the small, like, just mm-hmm. just small, which for me, mm-hmm. I'm so animated, so I yes. know I'd get on there. They're like, just calm it down a little bit. I'm like, more? Yeah, it, it's, it is. It's <laughs> yeah. so crazy. Yeah, it, it's yeah. like that That camera is just such a, an interesting piece of equipment because yeah. it does. It picks up the slightest thing. Yeah, yeah. But, but I can tell you like it. Yeah, oh, no, and, oh. and it's, it's finding, again, like in, in that statement, um, to me, when I left wrestling, I, I left in, I, with no ill will, right? you know, and I, I've never, ever talked bad about uh, anyone in WWE or, or WWE as a company or anything like that. Right. Um, but, you know, personally, I did not leave on the note I would have mm-hmm. liked to. Right. Um, and you know what? My, my goals may have shifted, um, but... What NWA did, it made me like, and, and especially the locker room too, because it is an amazing locker room of both you know women and men, um, mm-hmm. and, and just it's such a team, team effort there. Um, it made me be okay with wrestling again, like, and I guess I didn't feel like I was out here in LA trying to like put the past behind me and escape something to where I, I've now kind of become um, 
open, you know, to even like things about the past, like to, to wrestling, which has been such a part of my past. But I'm, I'm open to accept that and kind of let that evolve where it may and then open to the new opportunities I have Acting out wise. here. And um, Doesn't it show you that you can do both? Oh, absolutely. That's a beautiful thing. Is absolutely. You can do both. It doesn't have to be no. one door closed and another door open. Yeah. But looking yeah. back now, now that there's been years since mm-hmm. 2016 mm-hmm. of your release, what has been the silver lining? Because I always say everything has a silver lining. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it takes a while to find it. Mm-hmm. But have you found the silver lining? As absolutely. To, yeah? Absolutely. Can you um, share with us? Yeah. Um, to me, it was, again, self-analysis. Because um, I, I didn't have a lot of time for that, and uh, and especially like the last part of my WWE career where I was just not the person I wanted to be personally, professionally, or anything like that. Um, this allowed me the luxury to just really look inward and um, and kind of get to where I wanted to get. And, so, and, who were you, and who wanted you to be? Who um, did you want to be? I was just very. I was someone who was just again so laser focused, and when you know if anything like deviates from my goal and like. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew how to get there. And, you know, I could say, like, yeah, whatever they give me, I'm going to knock out of the park and it's going to be over and then I'll go fight again and, yeah. you know. Rinse, repeat. Rinse, yeah, repeat. and yeah. now it's just I, I've become a lot more trusting in the uh, the universe, as they yeah. say. Um, just kind of, like, more allowing things happen or things to happen. It's uh, the, the art of allowing, as they yeah. say. And I'm not, I'm not so... Um, linear in my thinking to where, again, like opportunities coming up, um, if it's not what I thought, you know, take the role, take the meeting, have the audition, um, you know, just mm-hmm. at, at least have a conversation yeah, about things. Open. And it, it's being comfortable outside your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like if I could go back to the me that was my last year in WWE, I, I could have thought, be patient and handle handle things a little differently. But if I didn't if I never left WWE, I don't think I would have gotten that luxury to have that um, that self realization and, and that's and kind valuable. Of, oh yeah, a hundred percent. You know why? Because you can continue making money in WWE. Mm-hmm. You can continue doing show after mm-hmm. show after show. But if you have a struggle on the inside and you're not mm-hmm. feeling one hundred percent whole or whatever, yeah. it is worthless. Absolutely. And it's like the money is not feeding your soul. The money is yeah. not is that you know, and the accolades yeah. and. And all, if, if you can't be centered, and that's what mm-hmm. it sounds like you've had the opportunity is mm-hmm. to become more centered. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't end. I mean, we continuously... Oh, it's a constant, yeah. Yeah, it's constant. a constant. Mm-hmm. But I will say that when I saw you or would talk to you, mm-hmm. I could see that you were somebody who was definitely in your head. Yeah. 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 Could you... Were there dark moments that you had mm-hmm. to battle? Oh, yeah, head? absolutely. Yeah? Absolutely. Um, you know, self-doubt was something that... You know, it, it, it creeped into me, and it, it was strange, right? So you could hit my music, right? When I hear Hallelujah, there's no doubt at all, and, and that's that's what I think has allowed me to to have the career I've had because when I'm out there, mm-hmm. I don't make a wrong decision. Okay. I don't. You know what I mean? It, it, yeah. it's just, as a performer, you listen, listen to the crowd, Start making adjustments. I right. am fine with, and then that's something a lot of people struggle with. Like where they're like, yeah. that's why we have agents and things. Where it's like, no, if I'm out there, just let me know my time. Yeah, well, we're gonna be fine. You know that that was never an issue with me. Um, it was like, it was such a break. It was such a relief. But then it was when you go back. Why aren't they doing this with me? Why aren't I'm not even on TV? And you know, like my T-shirts, my T-shirts. I think they were the highest heel selling t-shirt and they weren't even at live events and like I let that get at me and there were so many different things right so eventually you know it, th- that self-doubt creeps in like oh I'm not good enough I'm not good enough I'm not good enough and um you know I'm just the type where if I have a conversation with the boss right and look me in the eye and say something okay good that's the way it is I don't have to bother him every week so I'm not going right. to be someone who becomes more of an annoyance and and plus you know if, if the stove is hot yeah. Right. The stove's red. You're not going to do this, right? Because right. that would be insane. To right. The same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Definition of insanity. Yeah. 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 Um, I, you know, I went and um, I was talking to creative and this and that. And, uh, and Road Dog Brian James was was awesome. Um, and still is. And I wasn't getting anything, so I kind of like I had to look at this from a realistic perspective. And then, again, me leaving, and, and it was just I was surrounded by you know. Um, 
people at work that were of that same mentality because it um, I, I do believe that sometimes uh, or a lot of times or all the time um, you know the people you surround yourself with you know in terms of just the who's out to get me or they're not doing this or, or just the negativity in general right. um, it rubs off and so to me I just, I just had to hit the reset button in life yeah. you know I, I was surrounded by some very wonderful people in my personal life and some very not wonderful people in my personal life um, and I had to just kind of it was like a start yeah. over, you know. Um, yeah. I, I had to do that, which was not wasn't an easy thing for me. Um, but again, it, it, it's acting. It, it's been so cathartic because you know the the way that I'm learning how to act. It, it's you have to really kind of process these things, and it, it's helped me. Um, you can bring of, them emotion. Yeah, and but but it's helped me like be okay and like observing from a third party. Yeah. Um, to where, you know, and even forgive myself, like, no, I, I made decisions I made, but that, that was what I thought the best thing to do at the time was, and that, like, forgiving yourself um, for, you know, I, I wasn't the, the world champion. Okay, so I, who cares? Out of my control. See, and I think you know? I love that because yeah. so many people put such stress on titles, on Grammys, Which on, are, yeah. you know, Oscars, yeah. on whether, and, and they allow that, and I'm one that mm -hmm. was always like, I'm gonna get a Grammy, I'm gonna yeah, get a Grammy. Yeah. Mm -hmm where all of a sudden I realized, holy cow, you're living for this piece of metal. I get it, it's beautiful mm -hmm. and it represents mm -hmm. what it represents. But at the same time, you can't allow that to be the thing that says, okay, now you're a good person or now you're yeah. worth it, now you're yeah. great. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you know, how many world champions have there been? Um, I think the kind of performer I am, like there's only one me. Yeah. You know, that could do the different characters and fans still be what, so like, I would almost, in retrospect, like, if, if that was my legacy or is my legacy, like, that's pretty cool because there's it no is. one else like it, you yeah. know? So that that I've kind of definitely, you know, I, I love going, the yeah. fact that the fans surrounded you and read you, like, oh, all yeah. of us that even mm -hmm. backstage got to know you and were like, mm -hmm. oh, this guy is so good, oh, like, all the way around, thank and then they uh, read that into personal life. You're mm -hmm. with anybody? Uh, no, you know, I, I think, um, you know, I date and things like that, um, but... It's very tough to make a commitment right now because I don't know where I'm going to be. And, and with me, um, you know, selfishly, it's nice to have someone, but I don't want to bring anyone in on that life where I may have to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to be gone for a month or I'm going to be gone for however many months or, or yeah. doing whatever. And, um, and no, I, I think a focus on, on career is where I'm at now. But uh, again, just at the same time, you never know, so you're open opportunities, and that's why I'll say, stay a little bit and things like that. So it's, it's not, not like nothing's shut. Like I'm open to yeah. going, you know, and hanging out yeah. and getting to know people and stuff. So yeah. Trust me, when you find the right one, you will make the schedule work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is, I know people, yeah. and I, I used to do that too, mm -hmm. and be like, mm -hmm. no, but I am so committed yeah. this, that, and then. Yeah. yeah. And look, I traveled every single week mm -hmm. and made. You, know, you make but, it work. That's uh, awesome. You make it yeah. work. Yeah. You make it work when it's, and then that person understands mm -hmm. you too in your yeah. schedule. So yeah. um, it is awesome to see you again. Okay. It yeah, is you too. awesome yeah. Yeah. to hear your story and to hear where you've been. And mm -hmm. I always wondered, because you and I never really got mm -hmm. to talk. I was dealing with my dad dying mm -hmm. and everything to that year. So we never got to really talk about you leaving. But when somebody mm -hmm. brought up your name, uh, not long ago, I was like, oh, oh I yeah, thank, him. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Because yeah. yeah. you're such a great guy, so thank I just you. wish you so yeah. much luck. But I, as we wrap this up, I want to ask you, has your chase for glory looked the way you thought it was going to look? Absolutely not. But, um, it, you know, and it's funny because, like, we define glory, I, I think, and our definition of glory can uh, change as we evolve as people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where we were talking about glory, whether it's a Grammy, whether it's a, a title or, or whatever, um, you know, to me, glory is like I, I wake up now and I'm able to to wrestle, which is something I, I'm able to feel those feelings in the ring again, and, yeah. and like which is something I never thought I would do again. And I'm able to like catch a Malibu sunset every night. Yeah, that's that's nuts, and like and make a living as an actor. Yeah, um, that's insane. And, and 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 to really think of like yeah, like I I did this because I pretty much knocked the building down, mm -hmm. and then brick by brick you kind of, you rebuild it. And um, so as an actor, it's like Aaron the actor and Aaron the wrestler are two very different people. Now there's obviously some things that would like cross over, but uh, no, my glory is just kind of, it's being okay with me and, and knowing that no one else um, will ever dictate my sense of self-worth again or, or create any self-doubt. 
Mm. And I think that's the only doubt really is self doubt. Yeah. Um, you know, if you know you can do something and, and you know um, you'll do what it takes, mm -hmm. um, just go after it. I so, love that. Yeah. If WWE ever called you to come back, would you? Ah. Uh, you know, for the schedule that we had and everything right now, Lillian, no. Um, and and I, I would want to talk, you know, like again, creative um, handlings, shall we say? Yeah. Um, so you never say never, and, and there's certainly no ill will because uh, again, I don't take anything personally there. Right. Um, but again, I, I don't know if I would fit into what they're doing, and I don't know if they would really fit into what I'm trying to do either. So. No, uh, again, I'm grateful for my time there, and you never rule out any possible mm -hmm. future. But th there's no like overwhelming desire, and, and it's like they're, they're going to be fine. So am I, you know? Yeah, yeah, like you don't have anything to prove. Yeah, anymore. yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, tell everybody how to follow you on social media because I'm sure a lot of people have lost contact with you and want to reconnect. Yes, and I got an Instagram within like the last I think, 18 months, so that's a that's a big deal. So yeah. Twitter is uh, at Aaron's Thoughts. That's A R O N S Thoughts, and Instagram the Aaron Files T H E A R O N Files. Got it. And um, I'm following you on there, right? I think so. I th if, if not, not I'll follow you and yes, yeah. I'll tag in the whole thing. I know how to do that yeah. now. <laughs> I want to ask you, um, do you wish that you would have been able to keep Damien Sandow? No. Um, and, and Aaron's okay? Yeah, yeah Aaron's be, you. Yeah, because it's like, and, and people still call me Sandow, you know, that's yeah. just, I, I get it. Like I know, we all I'm, call I'm it. Damien. I mean, yeah, Damien is, yeah, that's how you're we, Damien to me. Um, but I, I think it's cool how, like I, I use Muhammad Ali, right? He was Cassius Clay, and they trained him. It's, the person makes the name, and, and I kind of I kind of dig being the guy that can play different characters. Yeah. That that I, I'm not even attached to a name. Right. You know, I, I don't right. know if that's too kind of. Yeah. Was out Damien there, but, your idea or theirs? Uh, mine, mine. Oh, Damien. What? I came up with Damien Sandow. Yeah. You so, did. Yeah. All yeah. right. Well, Damien Sandow was awesome, and he will forever live oh. in everybody's well, thank memory. You. <laughs> <but> <laughs> thank it's you. It's great that you are. Thank you. Back to being Aaron. Thank you. Yeah. You're always Aaron. Oh, but, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you're awesome. You're awesome, dude. I love you, you too. Dearly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. Chasing Glory with Lillian Garcia. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss a single video or a live stream. And definitely share this with a friend. All right, follow the show at Chasing Glory on Instagram, at Lillian Garcia on Instagram and Twitter, and Lillian Garcia official fan page on Facebook. For everything Chasing Glory, just go to ChasingGlory.com. Until next week, go out there and live with much peace, love, and passion. And remember, always be yourself and trust that it's enough. See you guys. Bye. Thanks for joining us here on Chasing Glory from executive producer Lillian Garcia. Don't forget to share this episode with your friends and be sure to subscribe at Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite shows. Yeah.